want to talk about this trait. It is so cool to see this trait. And, and Leo talks about all the other countries that uh, were doing it. Where do you think it was discovered? Clay Center, Nebraska, 1963, with a feedlot pen of rats. Okay, Dr. Cook, I believe, did the initial work on it. He said, this residual feed intake is the way to go. Before I start, I got to confess, 12-step confession. Closer? More? Like there? All right. I got to tell you about my wife for 40 years. She doesn't get too excited about me traveling anymore, and I'm on the road a lot. And the reason she doesn't get excited about me traveling is because uh, I don't eat like I should. Twinkies for breakfast with a Mountain Dew chaser. And the biggest problem is I don't get enough exercise. And she's always on me. you got to exercise. So she and my second boy have said, Pop, we're going to buy you a treadmill. But I keep saying to her, I said, I'm not sure this is the right thing to do. I think those things can be just a little bit dangerous. <clears throat> I keep telling her it's a heck of a lot more fun to go to a bull sale than have to ride one of these for 30 minutes every day. Times have changed in the cattle business and you can just look at weaning weights and what we've done to both weaning weights, which in the 1970s were about 300 pounds, today they're about 600 or 650 pounds. At the same time, cow weights have also increased in 19... 75, the average cow in the United States was about 1,050 pounds. And by 2005, we had increased that to 1,350 pounds, maybe 1,400 pounds. But what I'm saying is calf weights doubled, weaning weights doubled, and we increased the weight of these cows by over 300 pounds. When we made those cows bigger, it takes more feed for that cow. And in a thousand pound cow in 1975, she would eat 22 pounds of feed a day. But now that cow is 1,400 pounds, she's eating 28 and a half pounds of feed a day. And so when I formulate a ration for a Montana rancher, I never start less than 28 pounds of feed a day for a cow. Another way of saying that, it now takes six pounds more feed a day to take care of these cows than it did 30 years ago. So six pounds times 300 days, 1,800, let's just say 2,000 pounds more forage or more dry matter intake per year now for cows in 2009 compared to cows from 1975. What about cost of making a bigger cow? Well, if she was a 1,100 pound cow, you could calculate this to say, I might spend $132 on hay, $44 on protein, $39 on mineral, and so my cash costs on that cow might be $232. That's about 60% of total cash costs. But say we move that to a really big cow, a 1,500 pound cow, now we're not spending $130 on hay, we're spending $180 on hay. Not $44 on protein, but $60 on protein, going from $36 to $50 on mineral. So we have increased our cash costs from $212 to $290. So it costs about $70 more to take care of the big cow than the little cow just because they eat more. So this eating is an issue that we want to talk about. And that is, you can eat all you want as long as you're efficient. As long as it takes 10 pounds of feed to put on a pound of gain rather than 30 pounds of feed to put on a pound of gain. Okay? Huge differences. Feed is 60% of your total cash cost. 
And yet genetic selection for efficiency has really not been followed in the last 30 years. Until the last five years when we got the grow safe systems like Leo has invested in at Midland Bull Test. If we just select though for feed to gain ratio, pounds of feed per pound to gain, it has a negative effect in the cow herd. You begin to select for growth, faster and faster rates of growth. You end up with larger and larger mature cows, and you end up with larger feed costs to maintain the cow herd. And that's why I started with those slides, is if you select for feed conversion, it takes less feed to put on a pound to gain, feed to gain ratio, you're gonna end up with bigger cows. So we gotta do this differently. We gotta do this using a new term, residual feed intake, RFI, okay? We want cattle that eat less than the average, but perform normally. And so residual feed intake is a way of saying, I want adequate performance, but I want these cows to do it on less feed per day. It's fairly heritable. There's work from around the world that says if you can select for this, the heritability is about 0.4. Okay? The best way to explain what this residual feed intake is just to show you two steers from Texas. Both of these steers weigh about 530 to 540 pounds. This is a 77 day growth trial. So the same weights and these steers gained 2.1 pounds a day. Wasn't a statistical difference between either steer. They gained the same weight. Weighed the same, gained the same. And you would expect them, over this 77-day period, to eat 15 pounds of feed. Or 1,500 pounds of feed. Okay? So they gain the same, and you expect them to eat the same. Let's see what really happened. The steer on the left didn't eat 1,500 pounds of feed. It ate 1,700 pounds of feed. The steer on the right didn't eat 1,500 pounds of feed. It ate 1,200 pounds of feed. And so the difference is, the steer on the left ate 200 more pounds of feed than you would expect him to do. He is a positive RFI. He is not very efficient, okay? He's eating too much feed to give you the same rate of gain. Whereas the steer on the right ate 277 pounds of feed less than you would have expected them to do. Now this steer on the right is an efficient steer. It's eating less, but gaining the same. The steer, on the, the steer on the right is the efficient one. It ate less and it gained the same. The steer on the left ate more and gained the same. So residual feed intake is expressed the following. If it's a positive number, that's bad. If it's a negative number, it's eating less than the average of the population, okay? So why is feed conversion? That's, the, that's a little bit of the biology. Well, what about the economics of what we're talking about. And so we ask this question, why is feed conversion, pounds of feed per pound of gain, so important in the cattle industry? And so we're looking for efficient bulls, we're looking for efficient cows, we're looking for efficient heifers, using feed intake and residual feed intake as our criteria. Let me show you some data from an experiment that we ran. We had steers in Martinsdale, Montana, and we shipped them to a grow safe system at the University of Illinois. And then after the experiment was over, we divided the cattle into several categories. The steers that are most efficient takes five pounds of feed to put on a pound of gain. The steers that are the least efficient took the most feed to put on a pound of gain are steers that we considered the biggest eaters. Well, I thought the more they ate, the faster they would gain. And we found out from this experiment with the growth safe, that's not always true. They're the biggest eaters, but they had the worst feed conversion. It, they ate a lot, but it took a lot to put on a pound to gain. The fastest gainers weren't as efficient as the steers that had the best feed to gain. And you can see this just increasing, whether they're fast gainers or they're lean animals, or their fat animals or their biggest eaters. It just increases the amount of feed that it takes to put on a pound to gain.